Hey, I think Paula. Okay. Will. <laughs> yeah, oh, Paula. I, I'll start. Just give me a minute, yeah. please. Take your time, uh, connect. And then before you all start, please introduce yourself and mention where you're connecting from. I forgot. Uh, I think uh, Alankrit, Divyanshi, Shan, uh, two of them were, I was assumed, connecting from India and another from Austin. So, Paula, it's all yours. Sorry, okay. Um, well, my name is Paola Larrauri. I'm Peruvian, but right now I'm doing my PhD program in Santiago de Chile. So right now I'm here. <laughs> and yeah, I will leave my, my teammates to present themselves. Hi, so I'm Elaine. I'm originally from Jakarta, Indonesia, but actually I'm in Singapore right now because I'm doing a full scope workshop here in Singapore. So I'm in, I'm traveling at the moment. That's why. Um, hi, I'm Tapia. I'm also from Jakarta. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> Tapia is actually in Jakarta. <laughs> okay, take it away. Uh, Manu, just a thing. Uh, I think Pierre right now is not connected yet. He was having a, a class here in the university. That's okay. Uh, That's, yeah. Um, okay. Um, okay. I'm going to start. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Paola, as I mentioned. And well, first we were focused on doing something related to zoonosis, but at the end, we, uh, thanks to Manu, uh, some ideas and contributions, we decided to work with Iris Ajepti, this uh, vector that is really related to many disease, tropical diseases and from viral to parasite uh, pathogens. And well, the members are Elaine, Tafia, Pierre, and me. Uh, well, according to the World Health Organization, um, there's a lot of illnesses that can um, be transmitted by vector vectors. That's why they are called vector-borne diseases. And they're like affecting more than a half of the world's population. So many of them um, are, are, are permanent risk. And these vector borne diseases can play a central role in poverty reduction and economic development. Uh, well, as I mentioned, these uh, vectors are able to uh, transmit chikungunya, dengue, or Zika. So if you don't know that, or maybe in your countries, there are no these kind of diseases, those are some of the, the symptoms that someone infected can uh, experience. So um, we decided to focus on the mosquito because since, well, with a frugal approach, maybe we cannot work directly with the virus, at least that's what we thought. We decided to focus on the vector. So well, there are certain uh, features that are really important. In my case, I'm a biologist, so I thought it will be important to show you also uh, how are the stages of, of growth and development of this vector. And at the end, we have to focus on that an adult mosquito, mainly the female, it's the one that is going to uh, take blood from an infected person, and then it's going to transmit that to another person that is going to bite. Um, well, according to well, many uh, international institutions like the WHO, uh, there are a lot of uh, standardized prevention and control uh, measures. So in this case, I'm like, uh, highlighting some of them that are related of our approach in this project, preventing mosquitoes from accessing egg laying habitats by environmental management and modification. So for that, it's very useful to have some devices, in this case, frugal devices that can help us to detect these mosquitoes. And then uh, an active monitoring and surveillance of this vector abundance, uh, which are the species that are involved in this situation in a, in a current and specific setting. 
And then uh, after the surveillance, we can combine them with clinical and environmental measures. So, um, well, we decided to take the, as example, the study uh, did by Hapriya Punkundarajan and Manu here. Um, they proposed to use mobile phones that actually all of us can have one, can have access to one. So uh, here I'm highlighting too that these mobile phone users can collect acoustics data from mosquitoes that they can trap using different techniques as um, some um, car, uh, cages or maybe just film them in a free flight. Um, and then they will um, evaluate all the data uh, looking for the spectrograms of the flight trace. In this case, they were working with Anopheles Gambe and they measure the time average spectrum and the distribution of the frequency and multiple harmonics. So with this, they were able to uh, calculate the probability of distribution of the frequency and then um, determine which was the species that was involved here. And also they were comparing a lot of different models, um, models of mobile phones. So uh, at the end, they demonstrated that it was uh, kind of the same to work with different models um, but applying the same procedure to um, acquire these um, mosquito beating sounds. So we decided to uh, take this as example. And our question was how to improve recorder sound isolation of mosquito wind beating using some frugal setups, uh, smartphone based solutions and Python code too. Uh, to uh, define or identificate some features and species, in this case of Aedes aegypti. Uh, well, some initial inspirations were that nature uh, and past practices that are related to sound amplifying practices. Uh, well, of course, our human ear, then the mole cricket singing burrow, and then the pioneer horn, that is a traditional stethoscope that is used in, in Africa, and then the ear trumpet. And well, some materials that we decided, well, first we like explored uh, some uh, devices that were already uh, present in the internet. This one, for example, is the TWSU DIY speaker kit, and they were using origami, but also they were using some electronic components. So it was kind of, complicated maybe to implement. Then we found there's this enterprise that is called Backyard Brains that is really cool about well, all the, the setups that they developed to, to for schools. And here, for example, they were using 3D printing. So it will be also kind of difficult to uh, access in a local setting. So then uh, we found that using origami, as we learned in the class, uh, we can actually have some passive speakers focusing in the acoustics as the example that I mentioned of the study of Manu. And then um, we realized there are some parameters that are kind of, of interesting to, to measure. And that's how we decided to explore with some designs of origami. Many of these designs were like free on the internet. And we actually work with this, with this one and the horn made of origami. In this case, also we explore with craft paper, uh, uh, carton, mesh, uh, a balloon, some bottles, and well, of course, other very familiar instruments or tools for you. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to pass the, the, the slides. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, uh, we tried basically capturing a mosquito and just figuring out how to record the sound of the wing beats. And so what happened was that the first time I tried it, I basically um, just took like a bottle, um, empty, uh, sort of like poke a hole at the bottom of the bottle and then like covered the top with a uh, tissue paper. And then I couldn't, it was quite hard to record the sound originally like that. So um, next slide, Paula. So yeah, I decided to sort of like cut the bottom of the bottle basically and took out the cap and then cover it with like a mesh fabric. So at 
the time I only had like a gaze um, machine, so uh, gaze like the gaze bandage. So what I did, I just I just tied onto the top and the bottom, and basically that's how I uh, that's that's my main contraption to record the sound of the wing beats. Um, so I use like three bottles to test out sort of like the different recordings, uh, just to check out like different recordings on the different bottles. Uh, next slide, please. And so, yeah, what I did was that trying to sort of like capture the uh, mosquito directly into the bottle was a little bit difficult. So I used like the plastic baggies to capture one mosquito and then like um, put it into the bottle. And then like once, it, once I put it into the bottle, the mosquito starts flying and I found it like way easier to record the sound. So maybe Paula, you wanna play the sound? I think the sound is I think I have to share out. my sound. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, I'm, I want to hear some mosquitoes. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know while you are connecting your sound, uh, which species did you catch? Uh, we uh, here had, actually we is going to, to present that, but I think yeah. Elaine's have, have some. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll I'll wait. <laughs> oh, I, I think you can play the sound first. That's okay. Uh, if it's just playing on your speaker, um, Paula, if you can hear it, then we should just hear through the oh. mic, no? Okay, I think I can do that. Oh, because you have headphones, I see. Yes. Yeah, just remove the headphones I'm using this, for sorry. 10 seconds and see whether that okay. plays. Okay, sure. And I think Tafia is also linked. Okay. Uh, the Can you hear? Wait. Okay, this makes me very happy, uh, you guys. Uh, uh, so now if I click on individual sounds, Okay, I'll try playing from my machine. So I'll play that again. I can't hear anything. <laughs> Can other folks in the class hear or no? We can't hear anything. No. Yeah, I'll play that again. I think it's it's primarily, it's going to begin in the starting point. Uh, so I'll play that just one more time. Do you all hear that low pitch? No? I can hear it very well. Just go on everybody, folks who are online, just go on the Notion page that Tafia listed. Uh, and then play with all the sounds. Uh, Elaine, you can continue. Yeah, so basically um, I found that it was much easier when I basically cut the bottom and take out the cap and cover it with the mesh fabric. Like I basically get like better recording. So yeah, Paula, for some reason, oh yeah, okay. For some reason the Paula left the room. Okay, I guess Pierre, you can share. <sighs> okay. Yeah, and then maybe we only have uh, three, four minutes left. <gasps> okay, I'll, I'll be quick. And yeah, that's okay. basically what happened. And then like try, and then I just like try to move it to the next bottle. So I need a helping hand. So just to make sure that the, um, yeah, the mosquito will fly in. So yeah, that's all for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I will be super quick. Uh, Pierre, can you next? Yeah, so we test the second setup, which is the whirlwind. So we test from the um, existing um, pattern on the internet. So because like from Elan test, we know that um, Elan tests with different sizes. So in this case, like we're like focusing more like on the material and the shape generation. So for example, we uh, try to use like papers and then our cartons and then like, um, with the, because like with this shape, it's like conical, right? So we thought like, um, like on the, Third version, like, um, like, what if, like, we make it like a bit larger in the mouth opening because there's this concern, like, 
um, can the mosquito fly freely like with this very small um, length um, and then like um, with the material itself because like with so many folds it become fragile and whatnot and like uh, with the paper we found that it doesn't really uh, reduce like external noises so yeah the, uh, this is our um, test for that um, uh, maybe next we, we don't have that much data you know, skip it next okay yeah and the, the third setup is like oh uh, we try to um using um this shape which is like gramophone like design and actually like based on like previous um test results we find that the the medium in length and then the thicker the material is better to capture and uh, record the sound so we just try to like is there any difference with like these very flat shapes and then compared to um different uh, the before uh which like so many folds um and surfaces because like there's this one research they say that folds and like well not um will like affect with the sound results so we're about to see like how does it affect with the um recordings yeah here we can go okay so um uh, if you have seen, uh, we try with different shapes and size of these different bottles and these cardboards and all these origami concepts, then uh, we needed some tools to, to get an idea of how this improve uh, the, the recordings of this the, the mosquito wind. So um, when we discussed with Manu, uh, he suggests to, to try to explore some apps uh, from iOS or Android phones. Um, also, uh, what we did as part of this uh, process was uh, try to use our own code, maybe to, to try to, to manage and to get uh, some information and graphics um, and try to use for this presentation. So um, for this uh, project, we use Google Colab um, and we use Python and this library, Librosa, which is a useful library if you want to, to, to play with audio files and try to get some information. And as part of the data, uh, Manu also suggests us that we could use some uh, spectrograms to get this information from these audios and also uh, try to, to find those um, frequencies related to the mosquito wind beat. We know that the, the wind beat of the mosquito in the case of uh, Aedes aegypti is between uh, 400 and 500 hertz. So that's something that we wanted to, to find. So um, for this presentation, I will show some of the data because we have more, but we didn't have enough time to process everything. But this is an example of why it's so interesting and useful, the recording. So here, this is the recording start from another project uh, that was made from a research group in UK. And you can see here that if we use the, the Fourier uh, transfer, uh, the, the, Fourier, the fast Fourier transform and also the, the mill spectrogram, uh, we can have an idea about the, uh, let me see if I can use my laser point. You can see here that first, we can see the these peaks that they tell us um, if there is a, a, this is the like the frequency of the wind beat of the mosquito that from this recording, okay? So, and you can see here, for example, that they're like the same species, but they have the these frequencies of these peaks and different frequencies. Okay, and then we can have a more information about from the spectrogram, and here we can see these patterns are important because uh, they tell us that there is a mosquito uh, flying, <laughs> so it's present the the the, the a mosquito in, in in this case in the environment. So, and, and we will see those uh, pattern in the, the following recording. So as you can see, now we can identify if there is a mosquito present and then we can identify uh, this different frequency. In this case, because it's an accurate, accurate uh, audio file, we know that this um, frequency is related to the sex of the mosquito. So in the case of this species, and I'm not sure if it's for most of them, um, a male is a, a smaller than the female a mosquito. 
So it it mean it means that uh, then we will need to well to to fly and and the and you will find a higher frequencies and more amplitude in the case in this case. So it's normal that to have this from the same species and can give us uh, an idea about the, the sex of the mosquito. So th there is a correlation between the sex in this case and the and the frequency. So that kind of information is what we can get from from this recording. So now, because of time, I will share some of the information that we get. In this case, these graphics are the Fourier, the fast Fourier transform, or some of the recording that Elaine did. Um, in this case, uh, she captured two mosquitoes and used the same bottle, and we uh, test with the different size of water, as you can see here. So it seems that this, uh, this recording could give us an, an idea about the maybe the, the, the species of, of the of the of the sex of, of the mosquito. Um, so when we check the, the the spectrogram, then as I mentioned uh, before, you can see these patterns. And this pattern, if we play the the recordings, uh, we'll uh, check that in this time frame, there is the the sound of the mosquito is higher than uh, the other time frames uh, as part of the recording, and it's the same for all the recordings. So, as as I mentioned, using this uh, kind of plot, uh, you can have an idea at least to identify if there is a mosquito present um, in the environment. If you, for example, wanted to to with, with other devices, and then uh, if you use uh, the the fast Fourier transform, then you can get more information, at least to know uh, if there are some uh, this frequency of harmonics uh, as part of this. Um, we did the same for the second mosquito. Again, you can see those patterns. It's really interesting because then if you try to to do the same with some instruments, some musical instrument, you will find that different patterns. So it's not the same. It it, it seems that this is a, a special for for mosquito or for the wind beating in general. Um, so Pierre, okay. uh, yeah. one concluding mm -hmm. slide now. Okay. Well. Um, with the information that we found from the from the papers and, and previous paper from uh, from Manu's research group and from the UK research group, um, we we are not sure yet because we we need to <laughs> more recordings and also maybe to the next time to 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 use the false scope uh, to 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 see which 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 the the phenotype of this mosquito. Then we can try to. To correlate this frequency that we found here in one of the recordings with one of the species. So um, we assume that maybe it's the Aedes albopictus um, mm. because it seems, uh, according to Elaine, that <laughs> it's more like an, a tiger or a mosquito. <laughs> so, mm. but we are we we don't have picture in front of them. Um, yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Um, thank you for your attention. <laughs> I think lots of discussions on next steps. Let's do that offline because I want to make sure that everybody we can cover today. But I have to say, this is fantastic. You know, it's about doing stuff. So the fact that you guys are catching, uh, you have to try to grow your database and you will see the more you collect the sounds, the better you'll actually get. And then on the ID side, try taking the wing and try to image the venation pattern of the wing. That's a very standard way of uh, identifying mosquitoes. Uh, so yeah, it's a